Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Jakub Vanish and today we're going to be talking about Tesla and all the implications that were hinted by Elon Musk on their Q1 2024 shareholder meeting. So let's get right into this together. So first of all, Elon was really in good spirits. He was very in a positive mood, unlike uh, some previous, uh, you know, quarters. Uh, this time, I think it really helped because it actually bumped the, the stock price by about 12% even despite the, let's say, lower than expected results this time. The EV adoption rate globally is under pressure and, and a lot of other water manufacturers are pulling back on EVs and pursuing plug-in hybrids instead. We believe this is not the right strategy and electric vehicles will ultimately dominate the market. But let's talk about the, let's say, the future that that uh, Elon has laid out in front of everybody there. So specifically, he was talking about Tesla as not being just a car company. They see themselves as a robotic and AI company first. And uh, he was saying that if anybody, you know, buys the shares just for uh, basically, you know, the car part of their company, and you can take a look at this graph uh, in front of you, they don't view themselves as this. Uh, their, let's say, biggest asset in the future they see in robotics, specifically with Optimus, that will become much bigger product than, than uh, cars ever would, and AI basically solving, uh, let's say, the real-life navigation and, uh, you know, uh, auto, uh, let's say, FSD uh, that they're currently trying to figure out with, uh, with vision sensors. Now, uh, talking about FSD, he said that vision and digital neural net is the way to solve the autonomy for them. He specifically mentioned that one sentence that they're, uh, or Tesla is putting the auto back into automobile, <laughs> which, which was a nice pun. Um, but um, he spent quite some time also talking about Optimus, which also uses some sort of FSD to navigate themselves around the surroundings and in the factories, etc. And he said that they're planning to actually employ Optimus Optimus bots in Tesla factories by the end of this year, and they are aiming to sell uh, Optimus bots to other, let's say, manufacturers and other companies uh, by the end of next year. But let's let's see, you know, how optimistic is that? Uh, sometimes uh, we know how it is with uh, Elon's predictions. In terms of actually, we do think we will have Optimus in limited production in the factory, in the actual factory itself, doing useful tasks before the end of this year. And I think we, we may be able to sell it externally by the end of next year. If you've got a, a sentient humanoid robot that is able to navigate reality and do tasks at request, there is no meaningful limit to the size of the economy. So that's what's going to happen. And I think Tesla is best positioned of any humanoid robot maker to be able to reach volume production with efficient inference on the robot itself. The, this perhaps is a point that is worth emphasizing. Tesla's inference efficiency is vastly better than anyone, any other company. There's no company even close to the inference efficiency of Tesla. We've had to do that because we were constrained by the inference hardware in the car. We'd never choice. But that, that will pay dividends in many ways. Um, now, there was a question regarding the $25,000 uh, car, so the smaller car, so-called Model 2, or who, however it's going to be called. Um, so he was hinting at uh, the end of this year or beginning of 2025 production. Does it mean that we'll see a release date for 2025? He was not specific, but it is, it is quite probable, but I would say maybe rather 2026. Before that, we should still see a Model Y Juniper update, just something similar to what uh, Tesla just did with the Model 3, and uh, the newest version uh, Highland, which is, which in my opinion looks amazing. It's just a pity that they, you know, uh, gave away the stocks. Uh, <laughs> I really like those stocks. In terms of the new product roadmap, there's been a lot of talk about our upcoming vehicle line in the next, in the past several weeks. We've updated our future vehicle lineup to accelerate the launch of new models ahead of previously mentioned startup production in the second half of, of so we expect it to be more like the early 2025, if not late this year. These new vehicles, including more affordable models, will use aspects of the next generation platform as well as aspects of our current platforms and will be able to be produced on the same manufacturing lines as our current vehicle lineup. So it's not contingent on any new factory or massive new production line. It'll be made on our current production lines much more efficiently. And, and we think this should allow us to get to over 3 million vehicles of, of capacity 
when realized to the full extent. Um, he was making um, an analogy with the FSD compared to elevators. He was saying that in the past, all elevators were operated by a person that was employed there and that was pushing the buttons. And nowadays, nobody thinks about that. It's just all automatic. You you push the button and it takes you there. And this is how cars potentially, uh, you know, should be driving themselves around. Just Just listen to this, what he had to say about it. And in my view, this will be much like elevators. Elevators used to be operated by a guy with a relay switch, but sometimes that guy would get tired or drunk or just make a mistake and share somebody in half between flows. So now we just have, we just get in an elevator and press a button. We don't think about it. In fact, it's weird if somebody's standing there with a relay switch. That'll be how cars work. You just summon a car using your phone, you get in, it takes you to your destination, you get out. You don't even think about it, just like an elevator. It takes you to, to your floor, that's it. Don't think about how the elevator is working or anything like that. The next thing that he mentioned about FSD uh, 12.3, he said that this is the way to go. Uh, they are also making it available for a month for free for everybody in the US. Uh, and apparently half of the users already tested it. And they have already gathered 300 billion miles driven by the software, which is amazing. And I think it puts them ahead in terms of the compute and solving that autonomy you know, issue because uh, none other manufacturer has you know, this amount of visual data uh, to analyze. So if they're really going with this, you know, AI approach, um, they they really have a way uh, ahead of everybody else. Um, now they also let's say uh, lowered the price of S FSD uh, quite si significantly. So the subscription is now now ninety nine dollars per month in the US, and uh, or it is eight k you know for the full uh, purchase. That's that's also possible. However, he was also not uh, you know hinting at this being kind of a lifelong purchase that you would uh, you would buy it once and when you change a car in five or six years that you would still have your FSD. Uh, it's stay locked to the car for now but let's see you know what they do in the future and they also mentioned that one major legacy automaker uh, is uh, in discussions to license FSD for their brand, which would be interesting, you know, if they would actually start selling it as a license, you know, to other manufacturers. So let's see where, where this goes. Um, and then he was also asked about the competition specifically in China. He said that, uh, you know, everybody lost a little bit of the ground, just like Tesla, but specifically Chinese competitors are losing big time. Only one that is profitable is BYD, but it is not as profitable as Tesla. So he doesn't see it as a as an issue or as a significant competitor. He actually welcomes the competition in this case because it keeps them on their toes. Um, he also mentioned that uh, Tesla is making progress with the EU and Chinese regulators regarding FSD release and was hinting at potential end of the year or beginning of next year, you know, to, to have some releases there, which would be amazing. But I honestly cannot see it as a European citizen. Uh, we have so many regulations and so difficult to get anything passed. Uh, you know the regulators that uh, it sounds like a wet dream to be honest and then last point that he was talking about that I found very very interesting he was basically talking about you know their whole fleet you know all of those millions of cars that they already sold to work as a mobile data center he was saying that even if it would be using you know one kilowatt hour uh, out of the let's say 75 kilowatt hours battery of the car that's nothing uh, you know that can be constantly basically used by the car to to like especially if you're not driving if it's somewhere idle to, to work as a, you know, computing power as a, as a kind of a data center. So they would potentially compete with Amazon, with their AWS or with Google and uh, Microsoft and Azure, etc. So <laughs> this seems a little bit more far-fetched, but all of that, you know, all of these news and visions, uh, including, you know, uh, the positive outlook and let's say a tone in Elon's voice uh, meant that even, like I said, despite um, worse than expected results, they actually bumped the stock a little bit though year to date i think they're down quite significantly so it still might be a you know right time to to buy and stock up if you're into into tesla so let's see let me know what you think about this in the comments otherwise if you would like more content like this you know feel free to subscribe leave a like uh, and i wish you a great day thanks a lot for tuning in cheers bye bye enjoy